they're all adjustable with a little needle belt right here. Okay? And what that little needle belt does is it makes an oil passageway to relieve the pressure in the bottom. In other words, this, this, is the, this would be like a liquid-filled shock. Okay? And if I move this little plunger here, or this big plunger here, you can see the other side moves. And the amount of movement I get out of the other side depends on the opening of the needle valve, which means I can adjust the uh, dash pot for the amount of stiffness that's needed to make your, your unit control and have a good scope. So there's two parameters in your unit that we have to adjust to without getting too fancy. There's water starting time and there's mechanical starting time. But once we get your dash pot set and adjusted and calibrated on your machine, you should be set. A uh, typical dash pot setting on, on these here is uh, usually between like an eighth and a quarter of a turn open is all. That's pretty small. It is, it is. It is a very small opening. And one, of the, one of the things we do at American Governor is we do a lot of repair work and training. And one thing I want to demonstrate here is how to determine if a dash pot is good or not. You know, in a car, do you know if your shocks are good or not? You know, you kind of tell the ride's gotten rough, okay? Well, if, if you've uh, got your needle valve closed all the way and your unit still ain't stable, your dash pot may not be very good, which means there's uh, internal leakage here. So this is the test that was developed. Uh, I actually was involved in the development of this test at Woodward uh, when I was working at Woodward. It's called a dash pot reset time test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deflect The needle. We're going to move this down 150 thousandths of an inch, and then we're going to measure the amount of time it takes to return in seconds, 100 thousandths of that. So in other words, two thirds of the way. One time constant. Anybody that's electrically inclined. What we're looking for is at least 30 seconds. So let me do this once real quick. We'll do it several times, and it'll make sense after we've seen it a couple of times. So here's a uh, hundred thousandths. There's 150. I'm going to close the needle up. Now I'll release the dash pot. When we cross 50 here, we we'll start the timer, which is my stopwatch here. So we're going to measure the first hundred thousandths of the return. One rotation is a hundred thousandths. If that time is at least 30 seconds, we know that this dash pot, is, the clearances are still good. It's still got enough dampening action available to control any hydro turbine out there that's controllable. Now we're looking to come back all the way around one lap. We've already got almost 30 seconds and we're only a 50 thousandths return. Where this number, 30 second number, comes from, it comes from the mathematical algorithm for governing. There's a T sub R in the big long formula, and T sub R has to be greater to uh, or equal to 30 seconds. We're coming up on a minute, and we still got to come around to here. So this dash pot's in really good shape, and this is just one of our reconditioned dash pots on the shelf. Uh, we haven't done anything special to it. It's very typical that you'll get about, I'm going to stop it there, I got a minute and 19 seconds. Now that could have went as fast as 30 seconds, so this dash pot would still be good. And this is a test you can actually run in your own, at your own plant with your dash pot. You can see this little setup I got here is nothing fancy. It's just a dial indicator, something to mount it to. Okay? Did, did it, so I, let me run this test again. So now let me I'll release it here, open the needle valve, and you can see there was the full 150,000 smooth. So we're back to now where the dash pot is, is uh, centered and relaxed. And we'll do a, a deflection of 150 thousandths. A little bit more. Release it. 
right when we come down across the bottom, we'll start. Now we do see dash pots that it, it, it just runs right up. They're just, the clearances are shot. And if you put that dash pot in the governor, you're not even going to get to be able to get a good sinker scope. And they're going to be able to go online. You wouldn't be able to respond and be stable during grid fluctuations. Jess, we probably should have had a dash pot that only 30 second reach that time. <laughs> this test could be much faster. Have you guys ever take your own dash pots apart and work on them? Do you, do you have them? You know, kind of the same thing. That a dash pot is a dash pot. A dash pot's a damp one. Any, anybody ever work on an old carburetor? Carburetors had, on cars had dash pots in them to keep the butterflies from slamming shut. Same kind of concept. And see, we're going to get some repeatability here. And repeatability is a good thing. It means our test is valid. We had 118 seconds, a minute 18, we got a minute 20 this time. So it means that everything's good, we don't have friction, nothing, uh, all the adjustments are valid. Any other questions? Okay. That's pretty much the end of the demonstration. So where's the hole that uh I'll take this needle right out and see. See that hole is right there. Mm -hmm. It goes through to the bottom chamber. So then you're at the tapered part, is what you're at. The tapered part of the needle. Ah, nice. So, in other words, what I'm going to be doing here, when I deflect this plunger here, and with the spring, and I close the needle, I've got some uh, spring force is creating pressure in the bottom of the case, and the needle valve is what allows it, that pressure to release at the rate at which it releases. Remember how slow this needle's going? Now let me just crack this needle open. You can watch this speed up. You get a much faster timing. You can see right there, it's already speeding up. So you know that's definitely going to affect the strength and how much dampening you're giving your governor and making you making your stable. All the way. This dash pot is, is, is essentially no. There's no. There's no dampening at all right here. Okay. We can close it down. And now we can see we've got dampening again. The tighter the dampening is, yes. So if you had a real lightweight turbine, a lot of not not a lot of uh, mechanical mass you're going to need more dampening, okay? Or if you had real low head and a long water starting time, you're going to need more dampening. So this is how you adjust and tune a governor, basically to be stable to your turbine. Pardon me? Do we have organized training? Yes, we do. Uh, every June in Wisconsin, here in the United States, we have, uh, the question was, do we have organized training? We have a governor school class that lasts three days every June, where we go through stuff like this. It's hands-on, it's classroom. Three days, every June. Uh, we advertise in Hyper Review. Yeah, do you ha I know, do you have internet access? If you go to AmericanGovernor.com, right on the home page, the upper left-hand corner, special events, governor's school. Well, we have a, a big school every year in June, and then we have many schools for different types of governor's focus classes in the fall.
We have uh, the state chef, Governor Kang. What kind of governors do you have? Do you have hydro units? Mixed <laughs> now. Okay.